Welcome back. Just before this short break, we were talking to our guest today about uh, the history of Sicily and the different communities that have lived there for ages. And my inquisitiveness was for the Muslim, the Islamic background of Sicily. Yes, Francesca, you were saying that uh, there, there, there are communities and then there are areas and they, they are discernible. You can make difference. They can be seen as distinguished that they belong to that particular community. Absolutely. In Sicily, there are many communities that uh, come from Arabic places. Mm -hmm. And um, not only because our history is uh, full of uh, Arabic uh, um, mm. events and uh, uh, Arabic uh, uh, traditions uh, that uh, are now part uh, of our behavior, our food and mm -hmm, our, mm -hmm. um, our thinking as well. Mm -hmm. But if we go, for example, near Trapani or near Mazzara del Vallo, there the um, Tunisian uh, community is uh, very well established mm -hmm. and uh, they are quite happy to live there because uh, it's uh, so close mm -hmm. from uh, Sicily to Tunis Yep. And uh, the, the community <laughs> is uh, really, I mean, they merge together. So it's a great, great example of uh, mm -hmm. a lovely um, connection between the two communities. And also around Ragusa, there is a big uh, community of people from uh, Arabic background. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, now. But in, if we go in the past, uh, we can see that a lot of Sicilian cities have um, their name that comes from uh, Arabic names. Mm -hmm. So also in the center of Sicily. For, any, for example? Um, lots of them that are called uh, Castro, that uh, means castle. Mm -hmm. They are all connected with uh, Arabic fortification. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have uh, Castro Filippo, Castro Giovanni. There are mm -hmm. lots of mm -hmm. their Castro. Um, mm -hmm. For example, I know very well uh, one um, uh, village that is called Agira that mm -hmm. has beautiful, beautiful um, uh, churches and uh, also places like religion places where it's possible to mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we go to Palermo, we can clearly see lots uh, of um, testimonies of uh, the Arabic uh, uh, background of the city, even in Catania or mm -hmm. in, uh, in all around uh, Sicily. Also Syracuse, for example. If you go to the main square of Syracuse, you will find the Duomo, that is the main mm -hmm. church, mm -hmm. that uh, has been a temple, then has been a mosque. Mm -hmm. and then a Catholic church. And if you visit, you can see clearly that uh, the Muslim side was there. So that is uh, uh, in an architectural way. But uh, if we talk, for example, about cuisine, about um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. food, yeah. uh, in Sicily we have lots of um, uh, recipes that are agrodolce, so they are sweet and sour because uh, of the Arabic influence. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, we have uh, lots of uh, honey, <coughs> or we have lots of different uh, way to to cook with almonds and pistachios. Bread, different kind of bread. Um, well, also different kind of bread. Um, also in our language, there are mm -hmm. a lot of words that come from Arabic background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is uh, something that uh, I really like to speak about, and this is about the, um, the idea of garden. Mm -hmm. Because if we talk about a garden in the UK, we talk about, I mean, a place with a lot of flowers and a uh, lot of uh, green spaces. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we refer to a garden in Sicily, then it's not that. Mm -hmm. In Sicily, when we speak about garden, is uh, a cultivation of oranges. Mm -hmm. Because in Arabic time, uh, the oranges were not just a tree for fruits, mm -hmm. but they were uh, ornamental. Yep. You, so also, you have, you have uh, orange trees on the main streets of Rome. Ah, yes, of course, of course. But in Catania in particular, we have a big uh, production of uh, oranges that are blood oranges because mm -hmm. they are very red. Yep, yep. And uh, because of the volcanic soil around Etna, mm -hmm. they are, uh, the oranges that grow there are particularly good and uh, also particularly healthy. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, when my grandfather was talking about a garden, he was referring uh, to a cultivation of oranges. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, connected with the um, 
uh, Arabic uh, tradition of Sicily. So that is uh, very dear to me, the difference on, on gardening. Now, and that expression is common in many other languages. Like, I mean, uh, back in India, they say that uh, garden of mangoes, see? Ah, well, yes. possible, so, so, yes, so, so, so. but not in other parts of Italy, because mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Italy uh, as a country didn't have uh, the meeting with the Arabic culture as uh, we had. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do run in London a community that is called the Sicily Culture mm -hmm. that wants to explore this kind of connection, mm -hmm. because Sicily has been French, Spanish, Arabic, uh, uh, and also English. Uh, so. Y we really want uh, to connect uh, the whole community together around uh, the island. That's the main thing. Right. From Palermo, we move to Catania. Yes. Mm. Uh, next 5th February in Catania, there is a festival called St. Agatha. And this dates back to 251 when she was martyred. Mm -hmm. But it took about 86 years for her remains to be transferred back. Right? Well, yes, you're right. The story is uh, very big and full of adventures and also sometimes uh, full of myth and involves also the rest of the, uh, of the saint being transported to Constantinople, mm -hmm, that is mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. modern Istanbul, and then came back at night time. They also were uh, robbed. So it's a really an adventure in, uh, in the story of Sant'Agata. And it's a very big uh, event that involves uh, at least one million of uh, visitors that um, they come to the city for three days and they carry along Vietnam, which is uh, the main road of the city, a very heavy uh, cart mm -hmm. that is made uh, of uh, silver and uh, uh, gold and they there is the statue. Themselves. They pull without uh, any engine. Mm -hmm. So it's very heavy and is uh, an extraordinary example of devotion, I think, mm -hmm. because there are so many stories involved in that. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, lucky enough to work uh, for a uh, Sicilian television telling live uh, people about the event mm -hmm. because uh, it takes place also nighttime. So there for three days is continuously uh, on the roads of Catania. So there are traditions and um, lots of history and a lot to talk about. It must be a big tourist attraction. Yes, it is. It is. But I believe that it deserves more. For this mm -hmm. reason, I decided mm -hmm. to organize an event in London just mm -hmm. to talk better about this. Mm -hmm. But then you have something to do with it again in August, isn't it? Yes, there is uh, another one in, in August because the main uh, religious festival takes place from the 3rd of February to the 5th of February. So there are three days. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, um, on the 16th of August, there is always a uh, Sant'Agata Summer Festival. What does that uh, signify? Well, we remember when uh, the, um, the remains of the saint mm -hmm. came back from mm -hmm. uh, Istanbul, from Constantinople, mm -hmm. after being uh, robbed. So mm -hmm. uh, on that occasion, we say that a lot of uh, citizens went uh, uh, out uh, in their pyjama Mm -hmm. to welcome the, the ship uh, that was transporting the saint remains. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for this reason, if you, if you go to Catania, you will see lots of, uh, of, of people following the, mm -hmm. the cart, the mm -hmm. wearing an, a white uh, um, shirt. Mm -hmm. That is uh, the, the old <coughs> pyjama, <laughs> basically, mm -hmm. in which they, they wake up. That is the main thing. All right. Uh, we have been talking about the different things uh, of Sicily and Italy and in this uh, excitement of ours uh, uh, I have forgotten to talk about uh, you. Now tell us uh, what have you been doing and what do you do here in London? Which newspaper do you represent? And <laughs> Well, um, I am a happily freelance, mm -hmm. so which means that uh, I work for several um, outlets mm -hmm. and uh, I do different kind of uh, journalistic activity. So it happens, I mean, I, I write articles, I take photos, uh, I do mm -hmm. also videos, and I'm involved in the Union of Journalists. The National Union of Journalists. The National Union. So I think it's a great opportunity also to talk about the rights mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. Uh, also to, to meet new people.
Okay. That is the uh, main thing. What does this uh, National Union of Journalists stand for and what can it do for its members? Well, the National Union of Journalists has a long history in this country and uh, protects the rights of uh, journalists. Uh, if they are staff, they will uh, have uh, a chapel all, uh, all for them. If they are freelance, as I am, there will be uh, a community of people uh, helping each other mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. giving mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. and uh, sharing information about to work better and uh, to serve our community in the best uh, we can. I mean, in this uh, moment, historical moment, we speak a lot about fake news. We speak a lot about uh, ethics of uh, news gathering. So it's very important for journalists uh, to meet and to speak about how important is uh, their job and to do it uh, at the best level. So um, um, I'm quite involved in this and I'm happy to, to do so. So it's quite uh, relevant, mm. <laughs> I think. Right. Uh, the, the life of a journalist is, is uh, full of uh, dangers, you see, because the news gatherer, he goes out to, I've had the opportunity of interviewing a lot of journalists, and they go out to some of the troubled areas of the world, like uh, Afghanistan and, and, and Vietnam and then Korea and all those places, in some, some places in Africa, in Asia. How protected do they feel? I mean, I belong to a particular organization. Is this organization going to come to help me? Or shall I again depend on my own country's government who will try to get me out of that place? I mean, these things, and a lot of journalists are threatened. A lot of journalists are injured. A lot of journalists are killed. A lot of journalists are arrested in many countries. And they are there for a long time. Absolutely, the freedom of information is very important for the develop of our society. So we are very thankful to those uh, who went uh, uh, in very dangerous place in order to report and mm -hmm. let us know mm -hmm. what is uh, really mm -hmm. going to happen mm -hmm. in that places. So I must say <coughs> that uh, their safety needs to be improved because, uh, of course, there are risks. And uh, if they go there, they know that uh, they will going to take the risk. Mm -hmm. But our uh, aim is just to minimize uh, the amount of risk they need to take in order to do well their job. Because, uh, you know, it's very easy to report uh, uh, about a foreign country being in a hotel or being at home behind mm -hmm. a computer. Mm -hmm. But the, the very important thing is to go to the place, the, the to meet the people, yes, of course. And it's very important to protect those uh, who are courage enough and uh, good journalists enough to do so. So the, the freedom information at the moment, I think, is uh, one of the most important things we have to think of. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is accused, the journalists are accused that they don't go and get the information from the right person. So see, a journalist flies in from X place and goes to, goes to B place and on his way from airport to the hotel, he meets the driver of the taxi and asks him about the things <laughs> happening and then reports that from a very reliable source, I have learned this is he. And sometimes those reliable sources are really not worth anything. See? So this can happen to many journalists because they are fooled by others. So we are pressed by the time, the circumstances that they have to send report home something very urgent. It is possible to see. Well, of, of course, we all uh, hope that is not going to happen. And also because uh, if uh, you know uh, who is the journalist you are reading his mm -hmm. article about, yep, yep. then uh, there is a very strong selection, um, a very strong uh, connection and uh, trust right. with that person. As you mentioned, fake news. <laughs> yes, of course. That's, that's why uh, now with uh, internet and uh, web, it's very easy to access uh, information. But the very important uh, uh, side... Okay, is thank you, Francesca. It was a great pleasure having you. And... Uh, Hope to see you again sometime. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much. Despite Thanks. the bad weather, you came along. Thanks. Thank you, viewers, for being with us. And I hope that you've enjoyed the show as much as we have. We have learned a great deal about Italy and Sicily. See you again, same time, same channel, next week. In the meantime, take care.